بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان استقل الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته so inshallah we'll continue from where we left off so we completed the first chapter with regards to or the first section with regards to the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the biography of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and this is just a, a summarized version in this book, inshallah. So we'll continue from where we left off. So we, we'll be discussing this chapter today and one other chapter, inshallah. We'll try to get both of them completed. Nuzul uh, al-Wahi alayhi. So this is to do with the um, the revelation that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received uh, from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala uh, by way of uh, Jibreel alayhi salam and the Shaykh is going to talk about this today Habdullah and is, ex- is going to explain and give us benefits regarding the uh, the revelation or the descending of the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala via Jibreel to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so point 59 the Shaykh he says ثُمَّ نُزِلَ عَلَيْهِ قَوْلُ تَعَالَى يَا أَيُّهَا الْمُدَثِّرْ قُمْ فَأَنذِرْ هذا هو الإرسال وهذا معنى قول الشيخ نبأه بقرأ أو نبأه بقرأ وأرسل وأرسله بالمدثر. So here the Sheikh mentions he says then it was revealed upon him or as in the revelation the beginning the very beginning of the revelation oh uh, sorry not the very beginning of the revelation but it was then after what we discussed in the last uh, uh, lesson uh, it was then revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ya and the Shaykh is saying here that the first ayah that was revealed was from Surah Al-Aq do you remember Iqra uh, Bismi Rabbik al yeah so read yeah so that's the first thing that was said and this is to do with the Shaykh says this is uh, to do with uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's prophethood yeah prophethood and this surah the starting of Surah Al-Mudathir Ya ayyul mudathir qum fa'anzir This is related to his messengership. Why? Because uh, our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wasn't just a prophet, but he was also a messenger. Yeah. So this is what the Shaykh has mentioned here. And this is the proof. So then the Shaykh continues and he explains here the difference between uh, a prophet and a messenger. So inshallah, we'll, we'll go through that. The difference between a prophet and a messenger. The Shaykh, he says, والفرق بين النبي والرسول أن النبي هو من من أو من أوحي إليه بشرع ولم يؤمر بتبليغه والرسول هو من أوحي إليه بشرع وأمر بتبليغه وتوضيح ذا وتوضيح ذلك أن الرسول تنزل عليه شريعة وكتاب فهو نبأ بقرأ وأرسل بالمدثر على رأس الأربعين وكذلك الأنبياء والنبي يبعث بشرع من قبله وكتاب من قبله ويوفى إليه ببعض المسائل كأنبياء بني إسرائيل من بعد موسى والمدثر معناه الملتحف لأنه صلى الله عليه وسلم أصابه شيء من الفزع فقال دثروني دثروني أي قتوني فأن فأنزل الله عليه يا أيها المدثر قم فأنذر وربك فكبر أي عظمه وثيابك فطهر أي طهر أعمالك من الشرك والأعمال تسمى الثياب قال الله تعالى ولباس تقوى ذلك خير ثم يتقوى لباسا so we'll just stop there for a second let's go through this inshallah and then we'll move on بإذن الله تعالى 
So the Shaykh says the difference between prophethood and messengership is that prophethood it is one who receives revelation with legislation, a, a, a legislation as in laws, but he's not commanded to spread that message. He's not commanded to spread it to the people, and the and the messenger and the messenger, or and the messenger is one who receives revelation just like a prophet, uh, and he rece- receives revelation and legislation, yeah, and he's commanded to spread it as well. So that's the difference. So the messenger he receives everything that the prophet uh, a prophet receives, but the additional. Uh, thing or the difference is that uh, with the messenger is that he has an additional task of spreading that message <coughs> wherever he's sent with and the clarification or yeah the clarification of that is that uh, a messenger or a messenger he receives by way of revelation a book a law laws and a book so in 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 this in uh, so in terms of what we're discussing here the Shaykh, he mentions that the Prophet Sallallahu he was made a prophet when he was asked to read Biqra. And that was the first of the revelation to him. And he was, and the, and the sign of his messengership or the proof for that is when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed uh, Surah Al-Mudathir, Ya Ayyuhul Mudathir, yeah, as I mentioned in the previous paragraph. Qum fa'andir. We'll go through the uh, translation inshallah. And so, and also before uh, him, the, uh, and then the Sheikh mentions here that the Prophet ﷺ was sent his mission, and he was sent to the people with laws, and bef- and and obviously before him a book, uh, and and also the messengers that came before him as well. So the, the messengers they came with the same same way, book and laws, and spread and spread that message. And also some affairs that were discussed as well within the Quran, for example, regarding. The previous people like uh, Bani Israel, uh, and with regards to the previous messengers such as the Prophet Musa, yeah. So then the Sheikh says Al Mudathir. Its meaning is uh, to cover. So Al Mudathir itself, the word it means to cover, like to cover yourself with a blanket, for example. And the Sheikh says because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you know, he 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 when when Jibril came to him for the first time, as mentioned in the previous lesson. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ was uh, he was frightened and kind of distorted by that by what happened. You know, you could imagine if that happened to you. You know what state you'd be in. So then Allah revealed this ayah: Ya ayyul mudathir, qum fa'anzir wa rabbaka fakabir. And then the Sheikh says that in these ayahs, the meaning of it is that you know, and then uh, is to magnify. Allah, wa rabbaka fakabbir, magnify him, glorify him, and, and, and magnify him. Wa thiyabaka fatahir, this means to purify your actions from shirk. Purify your actions from shirk and purify your deeds from shirk. And uh, actions or deeds in this situation, from the ayah, and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used in terms of words, is used as thiyab, as in cloth, clothing. Is used as is just like a metaphor, yeah. And then the Sheikh brings another ayah to help us understand this, and he mentions the ayah from Surah to uh, Al Araf, Waliba so Taqwa Dalika Khair. So we'll just stop there. Let's go through uh, these uh, three ayahs from Surah Al Mudathir to get the translation of the meaning, yeah. So um, let's go to. So the first ayah is, Oh, you Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, enveloped in garments. Arise and warn, and your Lord magnify, and your garments purify. We'll go. We'll also mention the next couple of eyes as well, since we're here. And keep away from arujs, i.e., the idols, and give not a thing in order to have more, or consider not your deeds of Allah's obedience as a favor to Allah, and be patient for the sake of your Lord, i.e., perform your duty to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Yeah. So that's all what the Sheikhs mentioned here from 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 the surah for us. And then the other ayah, waliba so taqwa dalika khair, just for uh, additional explanation for us, and that's from Surah Al-Araf. So if you go to Surah Al-Araf, 
And let's just read from the start of the ayah. O oh, children of Adam, we have bestowed raiment upon you to cover yourselves, screen your private parts, clothing, and as an adornment, and the and the clothing or raiment of righteousness that is better. So it's like a metaphor. So so being righteous, basically, be righteous. Wear the clothes of righteousness. You know your deeds, your act, everything. And some of the scholars also say that uh, obviously wearing pure clothes. So in terms of the um, uh, the uh, linguistic meaning, the parent meaning, and also uh, the uh, religious meaning as well, in terms of uh, or purification from, as in your heart, purifying your heart and your actions from shirk, and also pu uh, wearing pure clothes as well. Yeah, clean. So look at it from both angles. So then the Sheikh mentions here, Wurujs, Ay Utrukha Wabtaid Anha. So Rujs, as mentioned in the ayah that we just read, Rujs refers to the idols. You know, leave the idols, leave them. Uh, um, you know, don't bother with them. Boycott them. Fahjur, meaning boycott them, leave them and stay far away from them. And the Rujs, that is referring to the idols, yeah? So then the Shaykh, he goes on to say, فَبَعَثَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ رَأْسِ الْأَرْبَعِينَ So I'm just going to stop here. So Ra's al the Shaykh just mentions here that uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was um, received uh, prophethood um, uh, when he was 40. When he was 40, yeah? One second. Kasim, do you want to say something? Sorry, sorry, no worries. Okay, we'll carry on. Sorry, I thought Brother Wasi wanted to say something. Okay, so here uh, the Sheikh mentions that the Prophet وسلم, was made a prophet at the age of 40. Uh, so then we'll just read the rest in Arabic. So then the بينه وبين المشركين حصل عليه أذى وعلى من آمن به واتبعه وحصلت مضايقات من المشركين في خلال ثلاث عشرة سنة وقبل الهجرة وقبل الهجرة بثلاث سنوات أسري به إلى بيت المقدس وعرج به إلى السماء وفرضت عليه الصلوات الخمس فصلى بمكة ثلاث, ثلاث, ثلاث سنين ثم تآمرت قريش على قتله وعلى فتك به وأعن الله له بالهجرة إلى المدينة فهاجر إلى المدينة بعدما التقى بالأنصار في بيعة العقبة الأولى وبيعة العقبة الثانية Let's just stop there for a second um. So then the Sheikh goes on to say here. Give me one second, sorry. Yeah, sorry, uh Wasim corrected me. Yeah, sorry, did I say rules? It's ridges. So the word up here is ridges, yeah. Ridges. Okay, so then uh Wasim. So then um the Shaykh goes on to say here in this paragraph that the Prophet ﷺ was received his prophethood at the age of 40 and he remained in Mecca for uh, three years. Yes, he says, uh, sorry, 13 years. So the Prophet ﷺ remained in Mecca uh, for 13 years calling the people to at tawheed which the Sheikh in the start of this book, we've been going through this a lot. So this is the Prophet ﷺ spent the majority of his prophethood calling the people to a tawheed yeah? And leaving off the worship of idols, or which is shirk, right? And so the Prophet ﷺ and the early Muslims who accepted Islam at that time in Mecca, they were on the receiving end of uh, insults and assaults and harm and all sorts of things and their affair becoming you know uh, tough for them and extreme and you know a lot of them died as well because of the harm that they received 
people of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu in the beginning, they received a lot of harm. Yeah, just because they were calling people to purify their worship and worship only Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala alone. You know, so they they suffered a lot. You know, for us. So you know, we need to be able to appreciate what people died. You know, uh, the Sahaba. You know, the Sabiyat, they died, you know, they died. A lot of them died, they were punished, they were hurt, you know. They did all this and just in order for Islam to reach us, you know. So we need to be thankful and appreciate. We need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then them, you know. And to remember, the, you know, what, what they've done, the sacrifices they made. So then the Shaykh continues and he says, he mentions here that what the Mushrikeen did to the Muslims in these first 13 years, you know, caused a lot of problems for them. Then the Shaykh moves on and he mentions that then the Prophet Sallallahu was uh, he was taken on the night journey, as you know, Isra wal Mi'raj, and he was taken to Jerusalem, Beit al Maqdis, and then he was uh, uh, taken into the skies, into the heavens, into the skies, Fis Sama. And, and that's, do you remember, as I think many of us will remember, that that's where the, the five daily prayers were made obligatory upon all of the Muslims. Yeah, the Prophet ﷺ and the Muslims, the five daily prayers. So uh, so then at that point, when that happened, then the Prophet ﷺ, of course, prayed with the companions praying uh, for uh, in Mecca uh, uh, for three years because the last three years before the Hijrah, um, this is where uh, that Allah commanded them with the prayer, etc. Then uh, the uh, Mushrikeen of uh, Quraysh, the idolaters of Quraysh, they started plotting and planning uh, against the Prophet Sallallahu and the Muslims uh, in Mecca and uh, to try and annihilate them and destroy them. Basically, they wanted to destroy them and annihilate them, wipe them off the face of Mecca, basically. So then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gave permission to the Prophet Sallallahu to make Hijrah and the rest of the Muslims to make Hijrah to al Madina. So then the Muslims, they... They uh, made Hijrah to Al Madina, but b before that, uh, uh, the Prophet met with um, met with the Al Ansar, which were the tribe from um, Al Madina. Um, met with the Al Ansar, the two tribes, also Al Khazraj, uh, and we know that as uh, the uh, oath of allegiance of Al Aqaba the first oath of allegiance and the second pledge of allegiance so oath, uh, oath or pledge of allegiance uh, Bayatul Aqaba Al-Ula the first one and Bayatul Aqaba Athania the second uh, pledge of allegiance or so oath of allegiance yeah um, and then they made Hijrah as you, as you, as you guys are aware uh, to al Madina. so then the Shaykh mentions here Hajra ila al-Madinah wa aqama biha ashra sanawat fal majmu'u th thalafun wa ishruna sana بعد النبوة عاش صلى الله عليه وسلم ثلاث وعشرين سنة ثلاث 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 وعشرة أو عفوا ثلاث عشرة في مكة يؤسس دعوة التوحيد وعشرة سنوات في المدينة. So then here the sheikh mentions we'll just stop we'll just break it down bit by bit the sheikh says here, then they made a hijrah or they emigrated to uh, to Al Madina, and this and the Prophet was there for ten years. So in total, um, twenty three years was his prophet and messengership, prophet of the messengership. So, so then the Sheikh breaks this down and he says. Uh, that a total of that uh, after the prophethood, the total of him being a, pro the, a prophet, the prophet being a prophet and a messenger spanned over 23 years. So the Sheikh mentions here that uh, uh, the prophet spent uh, 13 years of his prophethood and messengership in Mecca and 10 years in Al Madina. And this is what the Sheikh has mentioned here. Then the Shaykh continues and he says, ثُمَّ تُوَفَّاهُ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ رَأْسِ ثَالِثَةِ وَسِتِّينَ مِنْ عُمْرِهِ عَلَيْهِ سَلَاةُ وَسَلَامُ فَمُدَّةُ عُمْرِهِ فِي الرِّسَالَةِ ثَلَاثَةٍ وَعِشْرِينَ سَنَةٍ 
وهذه البركة التي أنزلها الله عز وجل عليه وهذا العلم الغزير وهذا الجهاد وهذا التمكين في هذه المدة الوجيزة ثلاث وعشرين سنة هذا من آيات الله سبحانه وتعالى ومن بركات هذا ومن بركات هذا النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وبركات دعوته وبركات الوحي الذي أنزل إليه الوحي الذي أنزل أنزل إليه وقبل هذا وقبل هذا كله بإيانة الله عز وجل وهو الذي عانه وهو الذي حماه وأيده ونصره حتى بلغت دعوته المشارق والمغارب والحمد لله رب العالمين. So then uh, continuing on with this paragraph the Sheikh says that then after those 23 years after the Prophet or the messengership that spanned 23 years then uh, uh, then the Prophet Sallallahu passed away uh, by the permission of Allah he passed away when Allah decided that that was the time uh, he passed away um, and he was at the age the Prophet Sallallahu was at the age of 63 that was then the total uh, of his lifespan 63 years so total lifespan 63 years and 23 years of that was prophethood and messengership yeah and the sheikh says this is a great blessing this is a blessing that Allah sent Allah Azawajal sent you know, by way of the Prophet وسلم, you know knowledge you know great amounts vast amounts of knowledge and you know effort uh, that what the prophet sallam put in effort and the companions and and you know solidifying uh, you know how islam solidified and reached you know the east and the west in such a short space of time 23 years you know and and this is from the blessings yeah and this is from the prophet this is by way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of the blessing then obviously by sending the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and revealing <coughs> the quran and and uh, both revelations through the quran and the hadith of course and the sheikh says before all of this you know uh by 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 the help of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the sheikh mentions this that allah helped the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the muslims and protected them, and assisted them, and aided them, up until the religion spread to the east and the west. And all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Yeah. So then we continue. So the Sheikh, he says, قوله بعثه الله بالنظارة عن الشرك ويدعو إلى التوحيد. So this is uh, the Sheikh says. He quotes from the original book that. Uh, um, when uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa on the mission of warning from shirk and calling the people to tawheed. These are the two primary purposes the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was sent for. Warning people from committing shirk and calling them to a tawheed, as we know, which is the opposite of shirk. Associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship, yeah? Then the Sheikh says, "Hadi da'watuhu sallallahu alaihi wasallam an nizara an shirki wa da'watu ila tawhid wa hada aladhi yajibu an yasira alayhi duaat fi da'watihim an yurakizu ala al inzar an shirki wa da' wa da'wati ila tawhid qabl kulli shay. Wa illa lam takun da'watuhum ala manhaj al rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam." So then the Sheikh mentions here um, that uh, the call of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his da'wah was based upon warning the people from shirk and calling the people to a tawheed and this and the Sheikh says this is obligatory that you know the ones who call the people from the Muslims the one who call others to al-Islam and or if specific if somebody's committing shirk you you warn them from shirk and you call them to a tawheed and this is what every caller should be focused on their focus should be on this primarily and uh, initially should be based on this this is what it should be based on and their call should be based on this before everything this is what the sheikh has mentioned 
And if it isn't, then then basically um, their methodology of calling or their method is not the method of the Prophet wasallam. So then if they don't follow this way, then they're obviously following a different method which has nothing to do with the way of the Prophet wasallam. So then the Shaykh continues and he says here, uh, الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم بعث الله بالنظار عن الشرك ودعوته إلى التوحيد فلا بد من تأصيل هذا الشيء أولا ثم بعد ذلك يتجه إلى بقية الأمور لأنها لا تصلح الأمور إلا بوجود التوحيد لو أن الناس تركوا الزنا والخمر والسرقة واتصفوا بكل فضيلة من الأعمال والأخلاق لكنهم لم يتركوا الشرك فلا فائدة من هذه الأمور ولا تنفعهم بينما لو سلم الإنسان من الشرك وإنه كبائر دون الشرك فهو مرجو أن يغفر يغفر الله يغفر الله له أو أن يغفر الله له أو يؤذب بقدر ذنوبه ولكن ما له إلى الجنة لأنه موحد. So then in this paragraph what the Sheikh just repeats from the previous paragraph <coughs> and he mentions that that uh, that the call and the basis the the basis should be a tawheed right uh, calling to tawheed and warning from shirk why because without with, without starting with this or having this as your main foundation then uh, the affairs people's affairs and those affairs will not be upright they won't be corrected they won't be uh, uh, clarified or corrected except with calling to people to tawheed and warning them from shirk so, for example, the Sheikh gives us some examples. He says, for example, if you had like people that say we were a group here and we were, you know, going out and talking to people and saying, for example, uh, you know, telling people, you know, uh, zina is wrong, fornication is wrong, drinking alcohol is wrong, stealing is wrong and giving them the evidences. And then these people, for example, ourselves and those people, they they would that that they would take on these attributes and characteristics of staying away from all of these things. However, and and for example, if they had very good etiquette and manners and everything, and you'd look at them and think this is perfect, they you know perfect example, they're a prime example. Then if they still are upon shirk, if they are still upon shirk, even though they do all those other good things, there is no benefit for them in it. Why? Because they are committing the as we know. They're committing the number one crime that Allah won't forgive if somebody dies upon it, which is shirk. So if they're doing this, then it doesn't. Then the rest of those good actions don't benefit them. Yeah. Uh, so then this is what the Sheikh has mentioned here. So, yeah. Um, however, on the flip side, if a person knows Tawheed properly, as we've been going through this book, and knows what shirk is and avoids the pitfalls of shirk. And he remains a muwahid, i.e. upon the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then even if he has, for example, major sins, like he's been stealing or, you know, uh, committing fornication and uh, many other forms of, let's say, major sins. Then if he dies upon that, then, you know, either Allah will um, uh, punish him or Allah will decide if he decides to, um, you know, um, Forgive him, then that's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? But be, but that's only open to the person if they died upon a tawheed, i.e. they're being a muwahid. So the Shaykh is mentioning this to help us understand, yeah? And I know he's mentioned this several times. Uh, because the end point of a muwahid eventually is uh, paradise. If you die upon tawheed, you will be going to paradise. Uh, whether Allah decides to uh, punish you and purify you in the hellfire um, for any major sins that... Uh, uh, you're not forgiven for or that you carry with you and they have not been forgiven you, you even then eventually your end point will be uh heaven so so this is important to understand yeah so then the sheikh continues and says fa tawhidu huwa al asl wal asas wa la najata illa bi wujud at tawhid awwal wa li dhalik yajib at tarkiz alayhi wa liyanatu bihi daiman wa abada wa da'watu an nas ilayhi wa ta'lim an nas iya وأن وأن يبين لهم ما معنى التوحيد وما معنى الشرك لا بد أن يعرف المسلم هذا الأمر ويتحقق منه ويتفقد نفسه 
حتى لا يقعوا في شيء من الشرك أو يخل أو يخلوا بالتوحيد فلا بد من هذا الأمر ولا بد أن تقوم الدعوة على هذا الأساس So then the Sheikh says, he says, so At-Tawheed, yeah, At-Tawheed, it is the foundation and the basis, right? There is no rescue and savior except by way of it. And therefore, that's why it's always At-Tawheed first, right? And the Sheikh says, and for that reason, it's obligatory uh, to focus upon it. It's obligatory to pay attention and give its due focus, yeah? And to take care of about this Tawheed always. We always give it care. We always, it's there on the forefront of our mind. We never forget about it, even if we know it. And also calling people to it and teaching people to it, just like we're learning now. We're learning about this. And clarifying it to the people and clarifying the meaning of Tawheed to the people and the meaning of Shirk. As the Sheikh mentioned, yeah, and it's and it's incumbent for a person, for a Muslim, that he knows this affair and actualizes it and is able to, you know, live by it. You know, if he learns Tawheed and he knows what it is and he knows what Shirk is, then he needs to be able to actualize it. So the Sheikh says that he needs to be able to, you know, live as a, a person upon Tawheed on the Tawheed of Allah and also avoiding Shirk. He needs to live by that and he needs to inspect himself he needs to look inside himself he needs to inspect himself and see how his affairs are what he's doing you know take account of himself and inspect himself um, up until he does not fall into a thing of shirk or where he uh, does such an action uh, which ends up uh, causing a problem for his tawheed either takes him away from that or causes a defect, a certain action that he might do, yeah? So then the Sheikh says, so it's important then, in terms of this affair, uh, that uh, that the call is established upon uh, its uh, its basis, meaning a Tawheed, that this is how we call people, how we should call people. It should be always a part of our uh, call when we're advising, whether it's our brothers or family or other people or non-Muslims even, we call them to Tawheed. This is always a part, the main part of the call, calling people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by way of Tawheed. Yeah. As the Sheikh mentioned. So we reach point 60 now. So inshallah, we should be able to finish this within the next 10 minutes, I think. Yeah, yeah, inshallah, we'll stop. We've got another page and a half, I think. Inshallah. So then we move on. The Sheikh says, Tawheed. <laughs> أخذ على دعوة الناس إلى التوحيد والإنذار عن الشرك عشر سنين في مكة وهو يدعو إلى التوحيد وينهى عن الشرك لأنهم كانوا يعبدون الأصنام والحكمة أن الله بعثه في مكة لأن مكة هي أم القرى التي ترجع إليها القرى والله جل وعلا يقول وما كان ربك مهل لكن قرى حتى يبعث في أمها رسولا والأم هي هي المرجع الذي يرجع إليه والأصل الذي يرجع إليه هذا هو الأم قوله تعالى هن أم الكتاب أي الأصل الذي ترد إليه الآيات المتشابهات so just stop there so then the sheikh says and his speech, as, as in quoting the original author of the book, Musul al-Thalatha, The Three Fundamental Principles, the Sheikh says, and then he took, or he spent 10 years, he sp- the, the Prophet sallallahu spent 10 years calling to at tawheed in Mecca. This is what the Sheikh has mentioned there. And warning people from shirk. He spent 10 years doing this in Mecca. And he called the people to at tawheed and he prohibited them from shirk or warned them from shirk because there were people that worshipped idols there were people that committed shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by way of these idols and the wisdom here the shaykh mentions is that Allah sent the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
um, or that he sent him on this mission in Mecca. Why? Because Mecca, it is the uh, mother of all villages, right? Uh, and every village returns to it. So it is the mother of all villages, Umbul Qura. And then the Sheikh says, Allah Jalla Wala, he says, and we, we read the ayah, so let's look at the translation, the meaning, inshallah. So let's have a look at that. Uh, ayah to, yeah, verse 59 from Surah Al Qasas. So let's uh, go there. Inshallah, let's read the meaning. And never will your Lord destroy the town's populations until he sends to their mother town a messenger reciting to them our verses. And never would we destroy the towns unless the people thereof are ghalimun, polytheists, wrongdoers, disbelievers in the oneness of Allah, oppressors and tyrants. So there's a proof for that. And if we go to Surah to Ali Imran as well, because Hunna Ummul Kitab, this is just a further explanation of the word um. So let's have a look at that to help our understanding, inshallah. So let's read the whole ayah. It is he who has sent down to you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi, uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the book, this Quran. In it are verses that are entirely clear. They are the foundations of the book. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, so they are the foundations of the book. So this was mentioned here in this translation for the meaning. So who will the answer a lake kitab min who ayat muhkamat on hunna hunna ummul kitab? So here they used uh, the word foundation, but it carries the same meaning that is a principle of foundation, yeah. As in this, uh, that the village Makkah, Makkah itself, it is the foundation of all of the villages, yeah. This is what the Sheikh has mentioned here, yeah. He gives additional example here. As in, with regards to uh, the ayat, there's ayat al muhkamat So let's let's read the whole. Let's go back. Let's read whole this whole ayah just to give us more of a context here. Yeah. It is he who has sent down to you, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the book, this Quran. In it are verses that are entirely clear. They are the foundations of the book, and those are the verses of of commandments, etc., uh, obligations, um, legal laws for punishment of thieves or adulterers, etc. So that's those and others not entirely clear. So you see, so that clarifies for us what those are, yeah, and, and just hopefully solidifies understanding the meaning of that word um. <coughs> so then the Shaykh says, Kadalika Makka to Sharafallahu he al Asal Aladi Yurja Ilahi Alulal or Muslimuna fi Akhtar al Al Yarjuna Ila Makka. فهي أم القرى بمعنى هي المرجع ولذلك بعث الله بعث الله نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم من مكة لأنها أم القرى ومكث فيها ثلاثة عشر سنة ينهى أهل أهل مكة عن عن الشرك ويأمرهم بالتوحيد لأن أهل مكة هم القدوة لغيرهم ولهذا يجب أن تبقى مكة إلى قيام ساعة دار للتوحيد ومنار للدعوة إلى الله وأن يبعد يبعد عنها كل ما يخالف ذلك يبعد عنها الشرك عنها الشرك والبدع والخرافات لأن الناس ينظرون إليها دائما وأبدا ما يفعل فيها ينتشر في العالم فإن كان ما يفعل فيها خير انتشر الخير وإن كان على عكس ذلك انتشر الشر. So then the Sheikh repeats some of the things from the previous um, uh, paragraph and he says so therefore. Uh, Mecca, you know, Allah, you know, uh, gave it a great place, you know, a noble. Is Allah made this place Mecca noble, you know, you know, people look up to it, and as an example, and it is a foundation. Everything returns, it, all people, everything returns to that land. Yeah, to to that place, Mecca, and the Muslims. In all of wherever they are, they all return. They always return to Mecca. Why? Because you know, when you go on Umrah, you go on Hajj. Where do you go? We go to Mecca. Yeah, and it is the mother. And so the Sheikh says, so that it is the mother of all villages. Yeah, and it's a foundation. Yeah, here, yeah. meaning that it is the returning point. 
and there and that's the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, sent the Prophet وسلم, on his mission and it was in Mecca and he's from Mecca and it was the mission was in Mecca initially right because it is the mother of villages and the Prophet وسلم, stayed there for 13 years as the Shaykh has explained to us and and he warned the people uh, warned the people of Mecca from committing shirk and he commanded them with uh, leaving of shirk and uh, be, uh, following uh, uh, or uh, he commanded them with tawheed because the people of Mecca they were the people generally the people of Mecca w- w- are an example at that, at that time they, they were an example even today they're an example for others and for that reason it was obligatory uh, that he stay uh, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stay in Mecca uh, uh, sorry and therefore it's obligatory because of this that um, that Mecca will stay where it is be where it is it won't disappear up until the establishment of the hour the day of judgment and it'll, and, and it'll remain a place of Tawheed uh, uh, and it'll be a beacon of uh, of uh, da'wah and call always to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and and everything will stay away from it that is that uh, uh, that conflicts with the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, uh, there, won't, there won't be shirk, there won't be innovations, there won't be superstitions. You won't find that there. Yeah, generally speaking. And the pe- and the shaykh mentions here that the people, they, you, they look, the Muslims... You know, we turn to Mecca as an example, don't we? You know, we see something going on. They says that, for example, people look and take that as an example, Mecca, and what's going on there, uh, always. So if if something is happening there, it'll, end, it'll eventually end up spreading to the rest of the Muslim world. So the Sheikh says that if it's something good, then a lot of good will spread to the Muslim world. And if it's something bad, then a lot of bad will spread to the Muslim world. Why? Because people, it's a returning point. For us Muslims, it's our returning point. We always look over there. What is going on? What's happening? And we take it as an example. And we take Makkah, you know, we take it seriously, you know. So then the Sheikh goes on to say, فَيَجِبُ أَن تُطَهِرْ مَكَّةَ دَائِمًا وَعَبْدًا وَلِهَذَا يَقُولُ جَلَّ وَعَلَى وَعَهِدْنَا إِلَى إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَعِيلَ أَن تَحِرَ بَيْتِيَ لِلطَّائِفِينَ وَلَاكِفِينَ وَرُكَعِ السُّجُودِ فَيَجِبُ أَن تُطَهِرَ مَكَّ حتى يستر منها الدين والدعوة إلى مشارق الأرض ومغاربها لأن الله بعث النبي بعث نبيه فيها وبدأ دعوته فيها عليه الصلاة والسلام مكة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في مكة ثلاثة في مكة ثلاثة عشر ثلاثة عشر سنة ثلاثة عشر سنة منها عشر يدعو إلى التوحيد وينهى عن الشرك ولم يؤمر بشيء بشيء غير ذلك لم يؤمر بصلاة ولا زك لم يؤمر بصلاة ولا زكاة ولا صيام ولا حج بل كانت دعوته مقتصرة على على التحذير من الشرك والأمر بالتوحيد يقول لهم قولوا لا إله إلا الله تفلحوا وهم يقولون أجعل الآلهة إله واحدة إن هذا لا شيء عجاب so then the Sheikh says in this paragraph that mentions here that therefore, you know, Mecca is always, is always to be purified and be pure always and forever. And this is why the Prophet, uh, this is why Allah Jalla Wala, He said in this surah, in, in, in this ayah from Surah Al Baqarah, verse 125. So if we go there, verse 125. Let's read the whole ayah. And remember when we made the house, the Kaaba at Mecca, a place of resort for mankind and a place of safety, and take you people, the Maqam, place of Ibrahim, Abraham, or, or the stone on which Ibrahim, Ibrahim stood uh, while he was building the Kaaba as a place of prayer. For some of your prayers, e.g. two rak'at after the tawaf of the Kaaba at Mecca, and we recommended Ibrahim and Ismail that they should purify my house. So this is the bit. And that they should purify my house, the Kaaba at Mecca, for those who are circumambulating it, or staying at the Kaaf, or bowing, or prostrating themselves there in prayer. So there's the evidence for that. So then the Sheikh continues and he says, So therefore it's obligatory that Mecca is purified, and it stays purified, from everything that opposes Al-Islam, the deen of Al-Islam. 
open open to the point of what comes in terms of the in terms of the religion and, and its call until the deen is spread you know has reached to the east and the west as a sheikh mentioned previously as well in the previous paragraphs and allah sent the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he sent him to makkah and he, he and he began his call in makkah alayhi salatu wasalam and he stayed uh, sallallahu alaihi wasallam he stayed in makkah 13 years as we as we know now and he spent 10 years called from those 13 years 10 years he called people to uh at tawhid and he uh forbade them from a shirk and warned them about committing shirk sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he didn't uh command or uh, order anybody to do anything else apart from those two things yeah he didn't uh, command them with prayer. He did not command them with zakat, uh, obligatory charity. He did not command them with fasting, obligatory fasting. He did not command them with uh, al-hajj for these first 10 years. And all, rather, in those 10 years, all of his call was focused on a, a, a warning from shirk and commanding the people to follow uh, or to be upon the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would say to them, say, La ilaha illallah, tuflihu. He would say to them, La ilaha illallah, as we all know the meaning of this now, La ilaha illallah, you will be successful. Say, La ilaha illallah, and you will be successful. And then, uh, the ayah that we read here, uh, verse 5 from Surah Tusad, so if we go there, this was the reply. When uh, when the Prophet Sallallahu said to them, say, La ilaha illallah, you will be successful. This is what they said. So if we go to Surah Tusad, this is what they said. They replied, Has he made has he made the gods all into one God, Allah? Verily, this is a curious thing. They found it strange that to worship one Lord, but we know that it's a natural thing. <laughs> to you believe in one Lord, you worship one God, you know. But they found it strange because of the habits that they had of um polytheism so we'll uh, we finish now we finish this point so this is the next point point 61 uh, we'll stop here because this is to do with al-isra wal-mi'raj the night journey so uh, this is a longer lesson uh, so inshallah we'll uh, focus on completing this next week uh, by the uh, by the permission of allah so we'll stop there barakallahu feekum subhanakallah wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa an astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum Warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And just before you go, um, the lessons will be around about seven thirty now, inshallah, because we do it shortly after Maghrib. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakumullah khair.